Welcome to the lecture 7 of the course Marine Propulsion. We will continue with propeller theory. So, the key concepts covered in today's lecture will be blade element theory with the induced velocities and then how it impacts the sectional thrust, torque and efficiency of the propeller blade and finally, we will do a simple propeller calculation using blade element theory. Okay. So, just a short recap of the assumptions that we make in the blade element theory, we have the propeller blade which is regarded as a series of propeller blade elements and each of them provides forces, aerodynamic forces based on the inflow condition. So, the velocity profile of each blade element varies along with the radius and based on that they provide, uh, they generate the forces. And the axial component of that force is the thrust and the moment of the tangential component is the torque that moment is taken about the propeller axis. And the total thrust and torque of the propeller blade can be obtained by integrating the elemental thrust and torque at different radius okay, for all the blades. Now, let us move, now let us start with the blade element theory considering induced velocities. Similar to the basic blade element theory calculation, we have a propeller blade for which we are taking a small strip or the element at a radius r of thickness dr okay and for that element we will try to compute the thrust and torque okay so again we will draw the blade element diagram so using the same nomenclature we have used for the basic blade element computation So, this is the blade element which is having an angle phi with the horizontal and that is defining the phase pitch angle of the propeller blade at the radius at which we have taken the element. Okay. And we have the two velocities v a and 2 pi r n. The resultant of which initially was computed as v r which had an angle beta with the horizontal. Okay. So, here in the initial calculations, we did not assume any induced velocity. The meaning was that if the propeller is rotating, it is moving ahead with a velocity v a and rotating at n rps, which is giving the tangential velocity at the radius small r equal to 2 pi r n. So, we had only the two components, but net, let us now go to the realistic scenario. What will happen to the propeller blade at a radius r? Let us think of the fluid particle which is around the propeller blade at the radius r. Now, as the propeller blade rotates and also moves ahead, the fluid particle will have a relative velocity with respect to the propeller blade 
which is VA, which is the velocity of advance of the propeller blade as the blade is moving ahead. And as the blade is rotating, the relative velocity in the other direction will be 2 pi r n. But the propeller not only moves ahead, but also induces a velocity to the fluid because of its action, because the propeller blade generates a pressure difference. So, it also induces a velocity as we have seen in the momentum theory. Here we have not initially considered the induced velocities in the original derivation in the last class. So, if we think of the induced velocities, what will be the final velocity that will come in this blade element diagram. Now, V a is the velocity or, or the speed of advance of the propeller blade. Now, as the propeller blade is advancing, it is also inducing a velocity to the flow due to the suction effect. So, the fluid velocity with respect to the propeller blade is more than V a because V a is the original velocity of advance plus the induction component plus the induced velocities which comes as the propeller is advancing in the fluid. Right? Now, what happens to the rotational component? As the propeller blade rotates at any radius r, the relative velocity with respect to the fluid particle was 2 pi r n because of the rotational speed n. Now, if we think of the induced velocities as the propeller rotates, it will also induce a velocity to the fluid particle in that direction. Okay. Now, initially think of let us say as we have drawn the propeller blade. it is rotating and we are taking a point here okay. and V a was perpendicular to the plane of the board here. So, initially it was V a, now basically it is the velocity at which the if I think of the uh, draw it in a slightly different way, let us say in an isometric view if this is the propeller blade. Okay which is facing a velocity V a. Now, as it induces a small velocity also to the flow that will also be accelerated towards the propeller. Okay. So, that induced component let us say is a times V a. We express it as a non-dimensional fraction of the actual advance velocity V a. So, we write it, we write the induced component A V a the induced velocity as A times V a. Similarly, the original velocity at a radius r due to the rotational component was 2 pi r n right. As the propeller rotates, it also induces a tangential velocity to the fluid around it. So, not only the axial velocity, but also we have a tangential velocity. Now, that fluid is also having a tangential velocity in the same direction as the propeller rotates. Okay. So, in that case, what will be the new relative velocity due after considering the induced velocity? So, that will be reduced by the amount of the tangential induced velocity. Okay. So, that tangential component if we express it again as a non-dimensional fraction of the actual tangential velocity, it will be 2 pi r n minus a dash into 2 pi r n. Okay. So, the effect of induced velocities is different in the total calculation of the axial and the tangential component. In the axial case, because the propeller accelerates the flow, the induced velocities will result in a higher velocity component which is adding to the axial velocity or the velocity of advance. So, the total will be, so the axial part will be V a plus 
a v a okay which is v a into 1 plus a but for the rotational part when we consider the tangential velocity the fluid particle now has a relative velocity of 2 pi r n minus a dash times 2 pi r n where a dash is due to the induced tangential velocity at that point ok. So, the resultant now velocity in the tangential direction will be 2 pi r n minus a dash into 2 pi r n which is basically 2 pi r n into 1 minus a dash ok. Let us try to understand the propeller velocity triangle with the induced velocities with the help of a model propeller ok. So, I again have a model propeller where we will try to understand how the velocity pattern on a propeller blade section look like in the velocity diagram. As the propeller rotates it will create a pressure jump across the propeller disc between the suction and pressure side. So, it will accelerate the flow. So, because it rotates and moves forward, it moves forward with a velocity v a and on top of that it creates a pressure difference by accelerating the flow. So, that acceleration component a times v a or the axial induced velocity will be added because it is accelerating the flow as well as moving ahead. So, the fluid particle will be having a relative velocity v a plus the acceleration part which is the induced velocity as the propeller is creating an acceleration in the flow. So, that induced velocity part a times v a or small v a will be added to the velocity of advance v a for the total axial velocity. Now, let us think of the tangential part as the propeller blade rotates now the blade as it rotates will also induce a rotational velocity to the fluid around it. Later we will see that the trailing vortices shed from the propeller blade actually lead to the induced velocities of the fluid in the downstream of the propeller. So, these induced velocity in the tangential direction will be in the same direction as the rotation of the propeller blade. So, if we take a fluid particle here again and consider only the tangential velocity, initially because of the rotation of propeller blade, it had a tangential velocity omega r which is 2 pi n r. Now, as this blade also induces a tangential velocity to the fluid at that location which is in the same direction. Now, what will be the relative velocity? It will be omega r minus the induced component. In this case, if we express as a non-dimensional fraction a dash, it will be omega r minus a dash times omega r. So, these two induced velocity components in the axial and tangential direction will be added and subtracted from the original v a and 2 pi n r for the propeller blade to give the blade element diagram with the induced velocities. This understanding is very important to calculate the blade element thrust and torque considering the induced velocities. Okay. So, based on these two axial and tangential components, we will now move to the blade element diagram again and compute the thrust and torque from the velocity. Now, let us try to draw the induced velocity components on the blade element diagram. So, V a will be increased and 2 pi r n will be decreased due to the induced component. So, 2 pi r n will be decreased and V a will be increased. So, the resultant this length by which 2 pi r n will be decreased is a dash times 2 pi r n and by the, the value by which v a will be increased is a times v a ok. So, 
the new resultant velocity will be aligned with respect to the final velocity component in the axial and tangential direction. So, this is V r the resultant velocity after considering the induced velocity component. What was our original V r? Original V r was directed along this red line okay, where we did not use the induced velocity. Okay. So, the new angle that comes up after considering the induced velocities this angle is called beta i. Okay. This is also the hydrodynamic inflow angle after considering induced velocity. So, beta i will be the hydrodynamic inflow angle considering induced velocity. Okay. So, this is our velocity part of the blade element diagram and let us now concentrate on the fourth part. Now, what has changed here? Instead of the old resultant velocity along the red line, we have the resultant velocity along the new V r with an angle beta i. So, the new thrust and torque forces will be based on the new lift and drag forces which is based on the angle of attack after considering the inflow angle beta i. So, the angle of attack now is this alpha ok. So, alpha equal to phi minus beta i ok. Based on this we will draw the sectional lift and drag forces. d d d l. So, in the same way as before we can compute the sectional thrust and torque d t by z again y z because the propeller has z number of blade. So, if d t is the thrust produced at by a blade element over the entire propeller blade across the entire propeller covering all the z blades then for each blade element for one single blade it will be dt by z similarly this will be dq by rz as before right so what are the angles now here this angle and this one are both beta i instead of beta ok. So, we can write in the same way d t by z equal to d l cos beta i minus d d sin beta ok and d q by r z equal to d l sin beta i plus d d cos beta i. So, from these two equation we can write d t equal to z d l cos beta i 1 minus 
tan beta i tan gamma where tan gamma is the ratio of the frictional drag and lift force and dq equal to rz dl cos beta i tan beta i plus tan gamma ok. Now, from this sectional thrust and torque we will compute the efficiency of the propeller blade system. Efficiency is given by thrust into velocity of advance by 2 pi n into the torque ok. So, everything with a d here because we are computing the efficiency of the propeller blade section ok. So, eta will be V a by 2 pi n into this d t by d q. So, z d l cos beta i cancels out we have only the tan part and r. One minus ten beta i ten gamma by ten beta i plus ten gamma with an r. Okay. Now, what is this? V a by two pi r n. If we look in this particular blade element diagram, V a by two pi r n is nothing but tan beta which was the original angle before we considered the induced velocity. So, this is tan beta multiplied by 1 by tan beta i plus gamma. This is the efficiency after considering the induced velocity. Now, we can simplify this in a way we can write this as tan beta by tan beta i into tan beta i by tan beta i plus gamma. Why are we doing this? Because we need to relate this efficiency to the induction factors that means a and a dash the induced velocities that we have computed non dimensionalized with respect to the v and 2 pi r n we need to use this in the efficiency terms. So, what is tan beta? Tan beta is v a by 2 pi r n. What is tan beta i? Tan beta i will be v a plus a times v a the vertical value here by what is the base for beta i this full angle is this which is 2 pi r n into 1 minus a dash. So, this is 1 by beta i 2 pi r n into 1 minus a dash by v a into 1 plus a ok. into tan beta i by tan beta i plus gamma ok. What do we have finally from this efficiency will be equal to v a and 2 pi r n cancels out 1 minus a dash by 1 plus a into tan beta i by tan beta i plus gamma ok. So, what is the difference with the case where we did not consider the induced velocity instead of beta we have beta i the hydrodynamic inflow angle after considering induced velocity and we have these terms a and a dash which are coming due to the induced velocity. Now, if we look into the efficiency term very simply the efficiency is a multiplication of three components 
1 minus a dash multiplied by 1 by 1 plus a multiplied by tan beta i by tan beta i plus gamma right. So, we have this first component, second component, third component. Now, if again we consider drag equal to 0, then this component will become 1. That means, gamma will be 0 and this part will be 1 if we neglect drag, but still we have the component due to the induced velocity. So, this is the part coming due to drag, this is the axial and this is the tangential induced velocity both of them. So, these three parts in total give the efficiency of the blade element. Is if we do not consider any tangential induced velocity and think of only the axial part, then this a dash will be 0, then this part will become 1 and also if we neglect drag, then this part will also become 1. Then eta will be 1 by 1 plus a, which is the same value we had obtained from the simple axial momentum theory. Okay. So, if we consider the axial momentum theory with the rotation, we have the combination of the axial and tangential and if we consider drag on top of that, we will get the three components of the efficiency of the blade element. So, this is the efficiency of the blade element. Okay. So, let us say we can write like this. And if we compare with the other efficiency that we had obtained neglecting the induced velocities, in that case both in the previous condition both A was 0 as well as A dash was 0. So, both these parts were 1, we only had the effect of the drag. Okay. So, we will see that all these components will bring down the efficiency from the ideal value of 1 to a realistic value. Okay. Still, there are some assumptions which we have used here. For example, at a particular radius, the, we have assumed that there is no variation of the uh, force or the velocity in the circumferential direction. Also, there are certain other assumptions, this is a very simplistic theory. So, this as of now, this forms the basis of the circulation theory, but this cannot be directly used for realistic uh, propeller calculations yet. But this gives an estimation of the uh, blade element efficiencies as well as the thrust and torque and we can do simple calculations based on the velocities to get the thrust and torque of the propeller blade element and compute the total value for the propeller blade. Look into a simple problem of blade element theory which we can do using the equations that we have just framed. So, the given parameters here are the propeller diameter, pitch ratio, number of blades z, advance speed, rpm. So, the both the geometry as well as the operational values are given and on top of that some blade section characteristics are given like chord, lift coefficient, drag coefficient etcetera. Okay. And finally, we are asked to calculate the thrust, torque and efficiency of the propeller. Okay. So, it, the problem can be framed in two ways. One is to calculate thrust and torque and efficiency of any particular section, given section or it can be for the entire problem. Okay. So, using these equations that we have developed okay. or and induced velocities may or may not be considered okay, in this particular problem as given. So, if we go back from the input values, we have V A given, N given for the propeller blade from which we can obtain the velocities at any section. Okay. So, at any radial section we can calculate V A is already given and 2 pi R n in the velocity diagram we can calculate. So, from that we will get the value of beta. Right. 
if the induction factors a and a dash are given if a and a dash are additionally given from that we will be able to calculate the beta i if they are not given we will not take that into account in this problem okay what else we have to calculate the blade pitch angle because to get the thrust and torque we have to calculate the angle of attack and angle of attack is nothing but phi minus beta so phi is given by p by 2 pi r right that we have seen from propeller geometry now in this problem p by d is given let us divide both by d d is 2 into radius okay 2 r so this becomes p by d by pi into r by r okay so this r by r is sometimes expressed as x which is basically the non dimensional radius non dimensional radius that means let us say at a value of r by r equal to 0.7 okay or r equal to 0.7 radius if we want to calculate the thrust and torque we can use this r by r value and the given p by d value which is given in the problem pitch ratio to calculate the phi okay and now we can calculate the alpha the angle of attack as phi minus beta which was already calculated here okay now the sectional characteristics of the propeller blade are given in terms of the lift and drag so it can be given in many ways for example the lift curve slope if it is given typically the as we have seen the cl versus alpha looks like this okay so this part is often linear and in that case d cl d alpha can be given in the problem okay and we know that the lift coefficient cl is zero at a negative angle of attack which we call the alpha zero okay zero lift angle so we can calculate for any angle of attack finally i have to calculate the lift dl which will come from the cl so how do we calculate cl from this given dcl d alpha if this value is given so for any case if this part is assumed linear so the value of cl at any particular value of angle of attack can be d c l by d alpha into alpha plus alpha 0 this is the value of alpha 0 ok right and this is the positive value of angle of attack that we have obtained using this equation phi minus beta so if alpha 0 and d c l by d alpha is given we can compute the c l now using c l and C D is or C D by C L will be given in the problem and then we will be able to compute the force D L which is C L into half rho A V square. Okay. Now what is V in this particular problem? V is the final resultant velocity. So V will be the resultant of V A and 2 pi R A and what is a a will be the chord length into dr because we have assumed that strip of thickness dr for the propeller blade element and c the chord length will be is given in the problem so that will be the plan form area considering that strip and this v will be nothing but vr so where vr is equal to root over of v a square plus 2 pi r n where v a and 2 pi r n are both known for a particular radius. So, we can calculate the forces d l and d d based on these values and from that already we have the values given of the other parameter we have the beta. So, we can calculate the sectional forces dt 
should be possible to calculate and dq okay as per the given equation from that we can calculate the efficiency of the blade section as dt into va by 2 pi n into dq so the sectional thrust torque efficiency should be calculated we can also calculate the thrust and torque of the entire propeller blade by integrating these sectional thrust and torque over the blade section. So, let us say for a propeller blade, we have the root section at point 2 r okay, and the entire radius at r. So, the blade is only between point 2 r to r. So, if we integrate the values of thrust and torque between two values between the root of the propeller blade and the tip, we should be able to calculate the thrust and torque of the propeller blade and any numerical integration technique can be used to once we get the uh, thrust and torque of the blade elements we should be able to calculate the thrust and torque of the entire propeller blade. Okay. And finally, the efficiency of the entire propeller in the same way just like this equation instead of d t we can use the values of t and q. So, v a into t by 2 pi n into q for the entire propeller t and q as we have calculated here already after integration we can use that to compute the efficiency of the propeller blade. Okay. This is how we can use simple blade element theory equation to calculate the propeller thrust and torque using the elemental thrust and torque value and efficiency. Okay. So, this will be all for the blade element theory, we will continue with the propeller circulation theory in the next class. Thank you.